Hi everyone, I am Anton Sokin and it is an honor to present our work on OS2D, one stage, one shot object detection by matching anchor features. This is a joint work with Denise Sumin and Vasily Lamakin. In object detection, the goal is to localize and classify objects in images. Localization means drawing tight bounding boxes around objects of interest. As of today, object detection is mostly tackled by neural networks, which have achieved tremendous success. Community has created a few high-quality open-source implementations that simplify bringing object detection to applications. However, as typical for neural networks, these methods need a lot of label training data. For example, one of the most popular detection datasets, COCO, has 18,000 labeled instances per class. The recent study of Gupta et al. showed that if the amount of training data is smaller, then the performance drops to unusable levels. Our work, among many others, aims to relax data requirements in object detection. We go by the path of one-shot detection. The goal is to detect objects of classes never seen at training. Our main motivation is the domain of detecting products on supermarket shelves. Here it is difficult to collect and maintain a dataset covering all classes of interest, because the assortment of supermarkets is vast and changes over time. Before going into one-shot detection, I'll say a couple of words on regular object detection methods. Most methods fall into one of the two types, two-stage and one-stage. Two-stage methods, like faster RCNN, process the extracted feature map in two stages. First, a neural network head extracts bounding boxes around plausible object locations. Then, features from selected locations are pulled and fed into another head that classifies and possibly refines boxes. One-stage methods, like YOLO or SSD, try to do both classification and localization in one step. There have been a few attempts to compare the two types, but as far as I know, there is no clear winner and both types are extensively used. As for one-shot detection, we can construct a simple and surprisingly strong baseline which mimics the two-stage detector. At the first stage, the method detects all objects merged in one class. The second stage is an image retrieval system, where the query image represents a class to detect and the database contains candidate detections from the first stage. As far as I know, the current state-of-the-art methods for one-shot detection are also two-stage. For example, RedNet from CVPR 2019 uses a region proposal network as the first stage and the metric learning module as the second stage. This method, like our baseline, finalizes the bounding boxes before knowing what classes it needs to detect. The QAE method of NeurIPS 2018 is of similar structure, but gives the RPN knowledge of what classes it is detecting. Different from these methods, we propose a one-stage method for one-shot detection. One stage means that both localization and classification are done jointly, and the pipeline has no class-agnostic object proposals. To show why this might be a good idea, I'll use a qualitative example. Consider the task of detecting these yogurts. The packages consist of two separate parts, and nothing like that was observed in the training set. The two-stage baseline detects many parts, but fails to merge them into correct detections. This failure cannot be fixed by a class agnostic object detector without modifying the training set. Our one-stage method knows that the classes to detect consist of two parts, so it can produce correct detections. In this paper, we propose a one-stage method for one-shot detection. The key signal for detection comes from matching learned local features by computing correlations. These correlation maps are fed into a neural network that computes the transformation aligning the class template to each possible image location. The transformations are then used to extract detection scores and bounding boxes that can be fed into the regular non-maximum suppression. Our model consists of the following key steps. Extracting features with a deep convolutional neural network, computing dense correlations between feature maps, the spatial alignment and the output extraction. The core of our model is the transformation network proposed by Roca et al. This is a regular 2D conv net that treats correlations as 2D feature maps. When properly trained, this network can produce transformations aligning the class image to different locations of the input image. The computed transformation parameters are fed into a grid sampler which provides locations for resampling the correlation tensor. At the final step of our model, we pull the resampled correlations to compute the detection scores. The corresponding bound boxes are obtained directly from the coordinates produced by the grid sampler. In this slide, I'll illustrate what our method computes. To make it more visual, we'll rotate the input image a bit. Our method computes the heat map of detection scores. Note that the heat map is smooth, especially around its peaks. This is a good sign that the transformation network outputs stable alignments for the class template. The detection scores selected by non-maximum suppression have the associated transformations. 
In this example, we use a fine transformations and visualize them with the red parallelograms. Finally, the yellow rectangles show the output detection bound in boxes. For training, we initialize the feature extractor of our model from the network's trained image net. For the recognition head, we use the recently proposed rank list loss. Differently from the standard in metric learning contrastive loss, it does not require picking only a few negatives, but instead downweights negatives in a soft way. For the localization head, we use the standard in detection smooth L1 loss. We also added a novel feature of remapping positive negative targets after the forward pass. It made a lot of sense for our model because the final detection scores were computed at the locations different from the ones where the transformation network was applied. Input images in our dataset were of relatively high resolution, so to put them in batches we had to subsample. In some sense, this was inevitable random location scaling data augmentation. To do better than random, we implemented mining of hard negative and positive patches. For the transformation model, we ended up with two versions, v1 and v2. v1 had an affine transformation, simplified to translation and scaling only. Translation and scaling are fully defined with annotation bounding boxes, so this model allowed training with full supervision. The v2 version had full affine transformations, which needed training with big supervision. On the positive side, we could initialize v2 from the weights released by Rocco et al. After correct weight surgery from this initialization, the model started to work well without any fine tuning on our data at all. We will refer to this model as v2 init. Fine tuning this model further appeared to be challenging, which is probably due to contradiction of signals coming from the localization loss and the alignment of the transformation model. The only way to fine tune was to turn off the localization loss completely. Our main domain of interest was detecting products on supermarket shelves. For training, we used images of the Grotia 32K dataset. The quality of original annotation was not sufficient, so we created our own. Overall, we ended up having 680 images with around 9000 objects of 1000 classes. The images had no clean train test split, so we used this data only for training and validation. For testing, we collected two sets of images with different classes, dairy and toothpaste-related products. On top of detecting products, in the paper we have results on the Instra dataset with logos, buildings, and 3D objects. To showcase the nuances between instance-based and semantic detection, we also report results on an ImageNet-based setting. Now let us look at the results. Naturally, we started from training a regular detector. Such detector can detect only classes it was trained on, so we report results only on the val old class subset. The val new class subset contains exactly the same images, but a method needs to detect new classes. The dairy and paste subsets correspond to the freshly collected test sets. Now let us see our main baseline. It outperformed the regular detector on the classes used for training. This might be the case because some classes had too few representatives to train a regular detector. Our next baseline consists in sliding windows based on ImageNet per trained features. This baseline is essentially identical to our model, but with the transformation model set always to output the identity transform. We observe that this baseline performs reasonable on the validation set, and outperforms the main baseline on some test classes. This is the case because the detector of the main baseline starts falling apart when seeing very different classes. As our final baseline, we've trained the CoAE method on our training set. It performed very well on the validation set, but was worse than the other baselines on test sets. Finally, here are the results of the free OS2D models. All perform on par with the baselines on validation, but are much better on the new test sets. The best version shows best results on all subsets with classes unseen at training. Now let us see some qualitative results comparing the main baseline and our method. I'll ask you to pause the video if you want to have a look and will only point to two aspects. First, here at the toothpaste example, the detector of the main baseline struggles with localizing packages correctly. It has never seen such packages at training. Our method, however, does not have problem with these packages. Another aspect I want you to see is this failure case. Since our method is based on patterns, it has no way to deal with 3D rotations. When a pattern moves, the detection also moves, so when rotation gets large enough, the detection becomes incorrect. With this slide, I will conclude. In this paper, we proposed a one-stage detector for a one-shot setting. The key signal comes from matching learned local features, and the one-stage structure allows better generalization to new classes. As for future work, we want to add some special treatment of very similar classes, something related to fine-grained recognition. It would also be great to add non-linear transformations that should improve performance for non-rigid objects. Our paper and code are online, 
please feel free to use it. Thank you for your attention.